Okay, I also want to do a quick tutorial for my own convenience on how to use the reference line function. So what I did is I created a brand new job. I just went to jobs and I said new, and I created this random job 21 on my tool. I have no cat file in there, I have no points loaded in there, and when I go into reference line, basically the reason I want to use it is because I want to create a reference line that's going to be able to give me all my offsets from there. So when I go into new station, you'll notice that I can choose the kind of point system I want. I don't really have a coordinated graph system set up, but so what I will choose is I want to choose my building line. I'm, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to use building line. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to point the tool directly to my two points on my building line, my two control points. Now, the only reason I would use building line three point would be is if I had a system, let's say, that uh, of my two points I had of my two points I had uh, my zero zero that I wanted to be zero zero wasn't accessible for whatever reason. What I do is I would lay out, if you see my tape measure here, let's say that I wanted the tape measure to be my zero zero of my line. What I would do is I would uh, first record the point way down there, any, anywhere along the line that I knew was marked, I'd record it as point one. Then I'd go all the way down here along the line if I had the, I would have the chalk mark to point two. And then because I needed this to be my zero zero, I would go along this line if there was a line on the ground to make my point three. And what it would do is it take the point down there the point here that I measured as point one, and the point, of course, right over here, and make that point right there my zero, zero. So I'd go zero, zero, and that would be my positive north, that would be my positive east, this way would be my, pos my negative east, and of course, that way would be my negative north. So that's why you would use three point. I'm not, not many people use it unless that, again, the zero, zero point they want specifically for zero, zero is inaccessible. So for pur purposes of this for myself, I'm going to go to building line, and this is basically building lines using two points. Okay, and my setup location is anywhere. That's the only option I have other than over a point. The only reason I would use over a point is if I purposely set my total station up directly over my zero, zero, and I was okay having that as my zero, zero reference line. Okay, so I'm going to say anywhere. I'm going to say okay, and now I'm set to go. I'm going to say okay, let's start this going. Now notice, the first thing I see is I see my... Um, Height of rod. The only reason I really set my height of rod is if I'm if I know I'm going to be moving my rod up and down throughout my job site. I just care about horizontal x and y coordinates right now, so I don't really care about my z. So I'm not going to set that. Um, it gives my angles uh, of my of my tool. I know that my tool is basically pointing at a 90 degree angle. Um, I know that my horizontal aperture, meaning the way it's turned from whenever the last time it was set up, is about 67 degrees. That means absolutely nothing to me right now for this purposes. So I'm going to, the head unit's going to follow me, and I'm going to go to my point one. I went ahead and leveled my rod, made sure I was level. And for my purposes, I'm just going to use this tape measure as a, an arbitrary reference line. I went ahead and just set up on the nine foot mark. It doesn't matter because essentially when you're on the job site, these are, it's, it's gonna be marked the line that you need to go on. And when you're in your POC 200, if you had a cat file in there, you could actually select the line you wanted to go to, go to the different points of that line, and you could start using that line as your reference line. But for me, because I don't have a cat file in there and I just want to do my offices from this line, I'm gonna say, okay, there's my point one. I'm gonna go to my tablet, I'm gonna say measure. And it just measured the distance. It's telling me now to go to measure reference point two, but before I do so, right now it's telling me that my uh, distance from my head unit to me, this HD here, is about 11 feet two and five, five sixteenths inches. So from the very the the center base point of my head unit over there to this tool, I know I'm about 11 feet away from the tool. Again, that doesn't really mean much to me right now. Now I moved to my second point along the line. I just went to this one foot marker, not that big of a deal. Again, if you're on a job site, this line would already be laid out for you and you, you would know that you're on the line. I'm gonna now measure this second point. And now I know that from this point, I'm about 11 feet, 10 and 3 eighths inches from that head unit. Uh, again, the horizontal aperture and the vertical uh, angles do not mean anything to me, um, unless I really needed a theodolite function in this case. Um, some people might do that. So now that I've got my two points done, all I need to do is go to calculate. It's now telling me, okay, what do you want to name this new station? I'll just keep it named that. I could view the results. Um, it's gonna, it's telling me basically that 
on this arbitrary job site I'm at, my station, my, my, my station, my actual station, my head unit is located at three feet, nine sixteenths north on the job site and 10 feet, nine and a quarter inches east. And what that means is if this is my zero zero where I measured, my head unit is three feet above that line, as you mentioned, as, as the tool mentioned, and it's 10 feet to the east of it. So it's already telling me where my station is in relation to my reference line. Again, that's nice material for you in some cases. Um, I can set my station height, which I believe I need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a manual height. And basically, my bench. I'm going to tell my station that my benchmark height is zero. Because again, I don't care about, um, about any sort of heights in this case. All I care about are my X x and y coordinates so most people in this case they would just make sure the manual height everything's zeroed out they're not really focused on anything and what that means is basically they're going to be basically measuring everything from where the prism is now to, as a zero point and as he moved around if you wanted to see heights it would do it relative to where the prism is right now um, but sometimes what they do is they say okay well my benchmark point uh, you'd have to measure it you could actually select a point and measure it but in my case, because I don't have a CAD file at all, I don't have a benchmark point idea to do anything for. So I could either set my benchmark height at zero and just say zero, or I could actually select a point, measure it, and say that's my benchmark height. That's where I want the tool to know kind of where I want to do all my references from heights from along this reference line. So that's, again, a convenience for you. But for my sake purposes, I'm going to just say that right now I'm at zero. I just want the tool to remember that I'm at zero and I'm good with that. So I'm going to just say, okay, right now we're at zero. And again, I'm going to set it now because I'm happy with it. Okay, perfect. So now we know, okay, we have my station set up. My, my backside points are set. My height of instrument is, because I didn't set it, it's just at zero. Everything's zeroed out. And now I'm going to go, okay. And now I have the opportunity to say, okay, now that I measured my reference line, I have my zero, zero there. And I have my my northern here that I measure so that I'm able to know what my line is. I can now say, okay, I want to move my zero zero point so far down the line. I want to move my zero point to this offset. I want to move my zero point so far east of the line. I want to move my, my line up or down. Or I want to rotate my line 90 degrees, 45 degrees, whatever you want it to be. So this is really convenient if for whatever reason you had a line that you had etched into the ground and if and you needed to automatically rotate that line, move that line a certain way that you wanted to go off of. For my case, I already have the line set on the ground that I want to go on, on and off of, but in the case that I needed to move it for whatever reason, I could just do it right here, right now, and it would automatically move my zero, zero. Line means it would move it north or south. Offset means it would move it east or west, uh, east or west along the line. Height, obviously north, uh, up or down vertically. In rotation, it would just move the line a certain degrees at an angle. But again, I'm happy with where it is right now. I'm happy that it's uh, where the line is, so I'm going to just say set. And automatically, it's going to put me into the functionality of where I can now move move along the line. And it shows me where my current prism is located, because obviously I'm connected to the prism. And I know, okay, well, right now, <clears throat> I'm located. My height of rod is zero feet. I don't need, don't need to change that. I could if I wanted to, if I'm really worried about heights, if I ever had to move my rod up and down. But my line is telling me that I'm 8 feet 5 and 16 inches, 8 and a quarter off the line, meaning I'm north of my zero, 0, about 8 feet. I can move down the line a little more, and this is obviously going to go up and up and up. I'm now at 10 feet. It's also telling my offset, at least right here, means that I'm negative 3 and 7 eighths inches. That means that to the left of my zero, 0, to the left of my zero, 0, I'm about 4 and 16 inches. That is what my offset means. And it even tells me my height relatively to my height. If I jump onto the curb here, my height obviously goes up from my zero, zero point. I'm about five inches above where my zero, zero is. Very convenient if, you're, if you needed heights. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and play with this a little bit more. <clears throat> FYI, if I put on absolute height, all this is telling me is that <clears throat> from the head unit, on the head unit I have this little plus sign right here. And that's where we measure almost all of our measurements from. If I needed to do the height of instrument, I would measure it. I, I would take a straight ruler and I'd go from the top all the way down to the middle point down to the bottom of the tool to get my station height. 
anyway, that's where I measure everything from. So if I'm looking at my absolute height, I'm taking that crosshair, and I'm saying, okay, that crosshair to the top of my prism, the middle of my prism, that absolute height is telling me is three inches, meaning that the, height, the instrument is about three inches above, or my prism is three inches below that centerpiece. Convenient to know if that's if if uh, you're doing a lot of measurements from that benchmark on your on your on your head unit. Another nice thing to realize on here is I see the point to line. What this means is that right now I have my line on the ground, and I want and I'm just moving around with my with my prism. Wherever I move, it's telling me where my point is in relationship to the line, which is nice because if you just want to move around and you want to just see where things are or you want to move to a specific point, you can use this and just walk, make sure you get to the correct offset in the line, and you're there. Another easy way to do it is go line to point. If I select the line to point, I'm going to go back into my relative height just because it's a little bit easier for me to see it from my, um, from my zero, zero. I'm going to go back to to relative height. I'm going to set my I'm going to set my relative height back on and you'll notice that it's going to tell me automatically that my relative height is uh, almost an inch, meaning I'm about an inch uh, uh, below where my my zero zero was. That's what it's that's what it's telling me. Again, if I go to absolute, I'm three inches below the head that point of the head unit. So I'll go back onto relative height just for the sake of this purpose. I'm going to go to line to point, and I'm going to say, okay, I want to go ten feet exactly down the line along my northern. If I wanted to go south, I would just make that a negative. I want to go 10 feet up the line. I want my offset to be three feet. And again, this is three feet to the positive east. If my zero, zero is there, three feet positive would be that way. I'm gonna say enter. And now on my height, let's say if I was dealing with heights, I would say zero, or I would say whatever height I needed to be at along that point. But for now, I'll just say zero, because honestly, it doesn't even matter to me. I could have left that at whatever it was before. So I say, okay. And now you're going to see this screen, it's going to pull up and it's going to tell me exactly how I get to that point. It's telling me that in, in relation to my station, I need to go left, I need to move to the left about two feet, two and one eighth inches, and I need to move towards the station about three and a half feet. So I'm going to just start moving, play with my tool, and notice once I get close enough, a graph's going to pop up. And now all I do is I try to get it within that bubble and get as close to my t uh, tolerance level as I can. Now for the sake of the video, I'll just pretend that I'm there, but notice I, if I needed to be more precise, I would just move the rod a little bit more, maybe two or three more times until I got that perfectly on that point. I'd be able to stake it out and know that I'm exactly 10 feet. I'm exactly 10 feet um, and three feet. 10 feet north, three feet off of the line. So now I'll go, let me show you one other function. I'll go back here for a second. I'll, I'll, again, I'm setting my line at zero, 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 meaning that I am using this exact line. All right. Now notice what happens if I put my offset at three feet. Again, the last point that I had, I want it to be three feet off the line. If I say enter, I want, that means that I'm moving my, my line three feet from that first zero, zero that I made. I'm going to say set. I'm going to go point to line and you'll notice that I, my offset, I am basically there, right at the three feet mark. It's saying, hey, you're on your line. That's what it's telling me. I'm on my line because I moved my line. If I go back, I'm gonna set my offset back to that zero. Set, I'm right back. Now it's telling me, okay, well now you're two feet, almost three feet away from the line that you're supposed to be at. So that's how that works. Um, and again, the height, that's all relative to my zero, zero. I'm one inch above where my zero, zero is. Now I'll show you another functionality. If I go into graph, this is really convenient if you are, um, if you are, if you already have a CAD file. But even in this in this case, you can see clearly where your zero zero is, where you're walking towards. You can even see where you are in relation to the line that you originally had. So I'm here, and notice my station is to the right. So one thing to remember is that the tool itself is going to set up on the XY coordinate plane. Even though I'm actually facing my station, you can notice that the way to read this graph is 
it takes your it takes what you laid out on the ground it doesn't matter where you're standing it's just saying okay your zero zero is here you went north here you're standing you're standing right here in relation to that and your station is to the right of your line even though the way I'm standing uh, the way that the way that you know I this isn't turned to the way that I'm standing I just need to make sure that that's how the that's how the tool sets it up my zero zero at the bottom and then it shows that I'm going north positive and then where the station is in relation to that line. Very convenient, especially if you're going to be doing measure and record later on um, and you need to stake out some points from that, from this building line. So now notice if I go back, let's say I go back into the reference line screen and I want to create a, a new line. So I'll go into reference line. I'm going to say new station. Notice that I no longer can create a new station with a building line because I've already created the line. I've already created my line that I want. Now I'm all a coordinate and graph system because I already have, technically the, the job that I have loaded in here already has my building line that I have loaded and everything can be offset from that building line. So let's say I want to create a new, a new line off of coordinate graph system. I press OK. My setup location is anywhere. If, again, if I wanted to move over a specific point, I can move my station over my zero zero, or over another, over another backside point on my on my drawing. But I'm going to say anywhere. I'm going to say okay, and uh, I'll call the station two. Sure, that sounds great. My height of instrument, I'll keep it zero. I don't care. And now all I do, I could either select a point, or I could say manual, and create a point that I want to go off of from the current northern, the, the current um, reference line that I already have in the system, that I already have set up. But most likely I would even go in here, I could go to graph and I'll just, just go, let's say I, I moved the station, I need to reset it up. I would go right on over to that zero, zero point, relock in the spot and go to my other point here, my backstation point two, and I'd lock that in again. If I need to create a new reference line, I'd have to create a new. I, I would have to create a new job because right now it's saying, okay, now you're on a coordinate system because we already have your building line put in the system. And so now what I'd have to do is I'd have to go into uh, my point ID. I'd have to, and it's just saying, okay, give us the point that you want to go to, and it's just assuming that you're going to go to your other biz, uh, building line. If I want to create a brand new reference line, I'd actually, with using building lines, building points, I'd have to actually just create a brand new job and do it again. But again, if I wanted to just use this job and I knew where my northern, my X and Y coordinates are in relation to my zero, zero, and if I wanted to put my height in there as well, I could, I could quickly type in a brand new point and go directly to that point and say, hey, this is where I am on the job site. This is my new reference line. Some people do that when they know exactly the coordinates of their sites. I've seen reference line used uh, by surveyors when they go uh, to a job site, they have their control points basically on the street below where they're uh, setting up their station. They lock in on those points as the reference line, their building line point one, building line point two, and then they just know their offsets from those points to lay, their, uh, to lay out their entire site, to, to lay out their entire control points on the slab that the drywallers or the plumbers would go back and use to lay their points off from. So it's a really convenient uh, option, um, especially when you uh, need to do a quick station setup and you already have a line that you know is there.